Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode number 84 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. Hope everybody's doing good. Barbara, let me guess. You woke up this morning, it was, what, 90 degrees? No, I woke up this morning and it was 78 degrees and it was cool here in Florida. Oh my gosh. I walked outside going, oh my God, did you feel the weather? It was so beautiful. And uh, yeah, 78. It was 27 when I went to work today. Wow. 27. Seven. I think I saw your Facebook post and you had ice on your uh, windshield, which is nothing I know anything about. This is the time of year where I will waste about four hours a week waiting for my car to warm up. <laughs> did you like my Halloween costume? I did. That was awesome. You look spooky as hell. Yeah, that's why I looked at it like that. I was trying to be in character. Oh, yeah. You, you look pissed. <laughs> I know I didn't. I was I just... supposed to look pissed. I was Medusa. That was the look of stone, turning people into stone. I get it now. Yeah. You see? Nice. So we are starting the first of about four episodes of all the conversations I got while I was at the Whitmix Digital Forum in Louisville, Kentucky. Well done. Well said, Louisville. You said it right. I had a lot of practice while I was there. I'm sure you did. So I was there back in early October. First off, we definitely want to say thank you to Whitmix for not only sponsoring the podcast, but for allowing me and my wife, who joined me over the weekend, to come to such a great event. While the event was not huge in size, it was huge in content. The lineup of speakers was great, and the overall flow of the event was well planned. A big props to Bernie over there at Whitmix for doing such a great job. And even though Barb was out in California living it up for her birthday, mm-hmm. I was able to convince a few people to sit down and chat with me, which it wasn't easy, but I was able to get a few of them. Well done. So the first conversation we're going to feature is a doctor and technician team who were speakers at the event. Bart Hyde, who's a CDT DTG, is a removable technician out of northern Nevada who, if you look up his work online, makes some beautiful removable restoration and is absolutely killing it in the overdenture department. Awesome. A few years ago, he was sought out by a newly graduated prosthodontist, Dr. Brandon Stapleton, who owns a practice called Identity Dental Studios right there in Kentucky. They talk about working from a distance, using technology, and producing incredible-looking dentures. Join us from the 2019 Whitmix Digital Forum. Is zirconia giving your lab a hard time on your full arch cases? Yes, for me. Have you experienced warping or breakage in your centering oven? Yes, for me again. Have you ever had an arch return for adjustment and had to scrap it and start all over? Yes. So, there's a better way. Introducing Crystal Ultra Nano Ceramic by Digital Dental, the better alternative for full arch dentistry. A Crystal Ultra arch is 60% lighter than a zirconia arch, is easily adjusted chair side, and can be milled on a one to one basis with no centering required. That saves you, what, 10 to 12 hours right there? Not only is a Crystal Ultra Arch better dentistry for patients, it's better for your lab as well. To learn more about the future of full arch dentistry, visit www.crystalultra.com forward slash voices. Crystal Ultra, feel the difference. Voices from the Bench. The interview. Really? Well, then you won't listen to this episode? (laughs) It's kind of like seeing a picture of yourself. Not good. Not not good. (laughs) Especially profile. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Somebody shows you a picture of a weird angle. You're like, that's what I look like. (laughs) Where did I get that fat? (laughs) 
<laughs> Just look at me straight on from now on, please. <laughs> so, okay, we are here at the Whitmix Digital Forum 2019. We are with Dr. Brandon Stapleton. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm good. <laughs> and you have no name tag. No name tag. Bart? Yes, sir. Bart? Hyde. Oh, Hyde. Bart Hyde. I know you from Facebook and the DTGs and all of them. You do some fantastic stuff. Thank you. You guys are here because you guys were talking about working together from a distance. Yep. Because Dr. Stapleton, you're here in Kentucky. Yep. Lexington, and, Kentucky. And Bart, you're in Nevada. Nevada, yep. yeah. Yeah. So how would you guys connect? Um, social media. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, in 2014, I saw when Bart won the Candler contest at uh, Lab Day. Oh, yeah. And I Were just, you at Lab Day? I was at Lab Day as a resident. I was there researching kind of what I wanted to put in my office and equipment and all that stuff. Cause so you're the dentist going to Lab Day. I was a Pross resident. Okay. I'm interested in that stuff. Good. Good. I love all the lab stuff. So, uh, actually, I have a in-house lab too. So, really, yeah. So your in-house lab. How many technicians do you have? And one CDT, and then one girl helps manage everything. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So I was there. I was shopping, looking for stuff yep. for my office, uh, and I saw Bart's beautiful denture that won, and I was like, man. To, to work with somebody with that kind of talent, I would yeah. just love to work with Bart Hyde. Didn't have yep. any idea who he was. No idea. And then, uh, you know, I reached out to him. I don't know if it was soon after that or when I got to private practice. I'm not sure. Uh, but to that point, we were doing all of our own denture processing and everything in residency. So there was no option for me to send it to him. Mm-hmm. But when I got to private practice, I knew that I wanted my patient's dentures to be I see. from yeah. Bart Hyde. So, um I was super nervous to reach out to him and send him something, and uh, we just kind of grew our relationship. So what did you that. do, just find out what lab he was at and sent the work? Or did you yeah, contact him? I contacted say, him. Yeah. I can't remember if we talked on the phone or it was just via email. I can't remember either. How long ago was this? It was, it was like 2015. So not that long ago. Four years ago. Yeah. You can okay. see how Give well take. I remember. Yeah, I was like, you guys are staring. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't take remember if it was months? like... Facebook private message or actual phone? I think phone? it was yeah. Facebook. Yeah. And then I followed him on Facebook and, you know, got to know his work a little better. And so, I mean, this guy Did you get a lot of doctors from that award you got? or um, You know, it, it was kind of depressing. After I won the award, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I was expecting a, a, a little flood. bit more. Yeah, a <laughs> yeah. flood. And uh, it took a couple years to kind of get a few and then... You know, then it's kind of like I work with a lot of Brandon's colleagues that he's friends with. You know, they tell people just word, word of mouth. mouth. Yeah, um, sure. Some of it's just social media. But, yeah, it kind of was stemmed from that. Yeah. But it just didn't happen as fast as you would have expected. Well, there, there aren't a ton of dentists at Lab Day to have seen that, right? No, but they posted it in, you know, it was in oh, magazines, it was in magazines yeah, or yeah. In articles and, and things like that, so... I guess my expectations were <laughs> were a little bit <laughs> <laughs> bigger. <laughs> Since then, I've learned to manage that, to yeah. uh, expect yeah. the worst and hope for the best. Sure. But no, it turned out good. It just took a while. Sure. So so how did you get started in the business? Um, that's a question I hear a lot. You know, like I said, my lecture, I wasn't good at a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I wasn't a, a star athlete or a great student in school. What I was good at in school was anything vocational. Those were things that I gravitated towards. Yeah. Um, I won a lot of awards in cabinetry in high school. No kidding. I knew that I wanted to be do something with my hands. Yeah. I, I just knew early on, which I, I'm kind of lucky that I, I've recognized that at such a young age that, like, I'm good with my hands. I need to find something like that. So I, I wasn't like a lost college student that's, you know, three years into their college career, mm-hmm. still not sure what they're going to do. Like I had, a, I knew that it, it needed to be something hands-on. So I started job shadowing, and um, I I was job shadowing at a, a small boutique, one-person lab, a guy that somebody, somebody that was local. And um, as soon as I walked in the door, you know, there's flames and you yeah. know, bunts and burners and. I'm like, well, this is pretty interesting, yeah. and he's waxing a, a crown, 
and uh, I thought, this is really neat. Mm. And the more I sat there, and so I was job shadowing for about a year, I think, got to do some hands-on stuff, pouring models, all of it was for free. Mm. Um, it was just a, a part of a school project. You got um, credit for it or something. Yeah, yeah I got yeah. credit for it. So then I, I did end up going to college. Um, I wasn't a horrible student. I just had a hard time applying myself. I got s really bored. I'm like the guy that's sitting in class with their leg kind yeah, of yeah. moving and and uh, really had a hard time focusing on any kind of content in the classroom. So um, I took a job and I took a job in Reno where I was going to college and uh, I just decided this is for me. Like I've at I a lab. At a lab. Yeah. And, and uh, stuck around there for about f five years, I think. What would you do there? Uh, I was a denture technician. Okay. So I started off doing just, you know, the entry level, worst of the worst. Uh, Pipe blocks? Uh, Goose and uh, trays? No. Uh, <laughs> grinding out disgusting relines. Oh, uh, <laughs> the reline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, doing repairs. Yeah. Uh, pouring models and... And then I and then I graduated to bite blocks, which was very refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, a and I became a partner. At, they offered me a partnership, a small like a uh, uh, shareholder partnership really? there. Yeah. I think I I stayed like a, another year or two or something like that after that. And then I had a friend who was doing um, like high end ceramics at the time, and I just was fascinated with this high end ceramic you know he's he's charging more for his stuff his stuff is just amazing mm. i thought well there's got to be a market for like a high-end denture and uh you know anytime i brought it up i got laughed out of the room yeah yeah <laughs> it's all economy economy yeah. economy yeah. they're like yeah you're you know you're you know you tell her they're thinking and they're thinking this guy's an idiot yeah and um it didn't stop me from pursuing that um i did it there was a there was a handful of other people that were, were kind of doing it, um, but it wasn't a big thing. You'd kind of see some of their work in mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the, the magazine, yeah. the LMT and stuff here and there. So I knew there was something to it. So I, I just trained. You know, I trained and got better and better. Uh, I had to open my own lab. I had to get out of that production-style atmosphere and open my own lab. And, and when was this? <laughs> This was in 2005 when I opened my lab. Yeah. It was in February 1st, 2005, so it was about 14 years ago. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a tough journey, you know. It, when you open a lab when you're, I think, 20, I think I was 25 or 26 at the time, uh, you know, no business plan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a, you have, like, four or $5,000. You you spend it on equipment and supplies to, yeah. get, her, to get her going. That's what I did. Did you do it out of your house? I did it out of my house yeah. in my garage. Nice. And, uh, I mean, I hit the ground running. Like, I didn't have a t I didn't have time to really plan for what I was going to do. I knew what my vision was. But when I got in there, it was like five relines a day. And, and here I am just really grinding, doing the laboratory grind, just getting stuff done. Like, my vision disappeared, like, of doing this high-end stuff. Because I was just doing the yeah, work yeah. that I had to do. So did doctors follow you from that lab, or did you? No, go I didn't. I didn't. Or? I did not. I'm proud to say I didn't poach any work sure, from that but lab. Sometimes they follow on their own. <laughs> sometimes they do. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I moved to a town about an hour away. Okay. How did you I, put yourself out there? I knew. I knew a couple of the dentists just because it's a town I grew up in. Oh, okay. And they were they were kind of nearing retirement, and so since then it's all new dentists yeah. in, in those offices. So things started to change, started to, the economy slowed down. Mm -hmm. And that actually was the time where I really was able to focus Interesting. Uh, yeah. on getting to where I wanted to be. Less economy. My vision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You had time. So I had time to, to focus on those things and, and it was good. You know, it was tough financially at the time, but it, it kind of cleared things up so I could to refocus, mm -hmm. you know? So after that, here you are. I mean, now you're just building up your reputation right. with beautiful dentures. We've all Thank seen you. them online. I mean, they're wonderful th stuff. They're almost unreal real, if that <laughs> makes sense. Yes, they are. Thank you. And I saw in your presentation, you just built a new lab. I mean, you, it's not just you working there anymore, is it? No, I have one other technician. Only? Just, just, no, there's only and two. just hired, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I built that lab. When did I build that? It was about 2000. 12, I think. Yeah. That was built out of necessity. 
Someone wanted to put their car in the garage? <laughs> <laughs> Were you in the garage? No, before? I wasn't in the garage. I'd moved to a, a commercial space oh. in town. Yeah. But then the rent got too high, and I lived on some property that I could build, like, a nice little lab on my property. So that's what I did. Nice. And, uh, you know, the, the payment on the loan was much less than my rent. Wow. Um, the utilities were much less, or, you know, far less. So I was saving a lot of money by doing that. Sure. But, uh, you know, it was, it was a project. Are you getting into digital? Is this a thing, or are you still? So I spent more money last year than I did the previous 13 years <laughs> on equipment. <laughs> so last year alone, I spent more money just on digital stuff. I think, wow. I, you know, for a small lab, for a lot of labs, this is just a drop in the bucket. But for me, I think I spent probably $60,000 last year. a lot year. of money. Yeah. For me, it is. It's it's definitely a lot of money. Yeah. So I'm glad I did it, though. Um, Are you printing dentures? I'm not printing no. dentures yet. Everything we do dentures is still analog. Mm-hmm. We'll design some, uh, we're doing a lot of screw retained, uh, a lot of over dentures, sure. double structures. Well, almost all Hybrids, of our dentures are yeah. on implants. Implant over dentures, you know, you kind of have to do, to do them really well, you have to do them analog anyways. So, um, but we, we, have, we have a mill. So we're milling our own full arch zirconia, mm. um, doing the full arch screw retained zirconia. We're, we're doing a lot of that. Um, some of the, the thimble hybrids, we call them. Some people call them the BDT. Yep. Um, so we're, we're using it for that, too. So, but, yeah, it's That's good. cool. Yeah, it, That's it cool. is cool. That's exciting. Are, are you looking to bring in more technicians, or do you want to keep it just the two of no, you? No, no, no. We're, we're looking to – I'd like to have about five people. Yeah. Maybe not five technicians, but five people. Sure. Um, some, you know, administrative yeah. help. Uh, answer phones, deliver things, make sure, you know, keep the technicians. You must be staying pretty busy, though. We're staying busy, yeah. yeah. I have a great technician now. I was really lucky to to find a good technician. Sure. It's, it's kind of hard to do. Absolutely. Especially somebody, you know, nearby, so without that's, having to re- relocate them. Yeah, that's rare. So, yeah. Um, so if anybody's listening, Bart's maybe looking. Looking to hire. Maybe <laughs> looking. I've, Who doesn't want to live eight hours north of Las Vegas? Right, in the mountains, <laughs> near the mountains, you're near Tahoe. Um, I think yeah. I like being the near Tahoe thing a little better than the Vegas thing. Yeah, yeah, that we do too. There's Northern Nevada is kind of more of the conservative part of the state, and Vegas is kind of the liberals part of the yeah. state. So there's a little bit of a rivalry there, not yeah. only with colleges, but just um, <laughs> party lines, I guess you could say. Nice. But uh, yeah, we're up north. Dr. Stapleton, we have not had a lot of doctors on our program, so I'm going I'm to drill you a little bit on <laughs> okay. why you feel it was important to search out someone that does quality removables when we know you can get them economy-made cheap. So quality, to me, was important. I, as a prosthodontist, I have a vision of what I want my practice to be and yeah. what kind of clients I want to have. Uh, just like Bart started out and he wanted to do, you know, he knew he wanted to do this high-end yeah. removable prosthesis. I knew that I wanted to be a fee-for-service practice. So yep. we are out of network with all insurances. Beautiful. Uh, I want to be a referral practice where I I work closely with the restorative dentists in my community and the surgeons to send me patients. So I knew that I had to be different than mm-hmm. than everyone else. My office had to have a particular vibe and feel i needed to have particular technology in my office yep. and in order to attract that i need a product like what bart has mm. to keep that going you go into a dentist office and they got the, the the most beautiful office you've ever seen and all the greatest gadgets and then they ask their lab to make them a 70 dollar crown and you're like that's not really no, no, part no, of your no. whole scheme you <laughs> yeah, know yeah. But that's <laughs> count, counter to what yeah. my vision is and so, I mean, I seek out really good technicians, and I work with some of the best. So do you make removables in your office? We do. For uh, We service the GPs in the community. Oh, okay. And then Patty does some interims for me. Yep. And then occasionally I'll have her do a final if patient is in a rush. And, you know, there yep, are yep. circumstances where Patty will finish one of my dentures. But I... My goal is to deliver products like what Bart has to offer. It's, and I think, every lab's goal. <laughs> not every 
dentists. No, no definitely <laughs> not. Mean, no, they're, they're looking more at the price tag, and I'm, you know, the price tag is important. You, you got to make money, and you got to yeah. be profitable at what you're doing. But at the same time, like, I feel like that's putting good karma out there. You know, I put as much good karma out as I can. That's the way to do so it. So that eventually it's going to come back. So while Bart started his lab with five thousand dollars, here I am coming out of residency. So I have, you know, college four years, four years dental school, uh, combined four years of residency. So a million dollars in debt. Uh, half, <laughs> half, half with dental stu- with my student loans. Yeah, yeah, half. And then I have to have this practice that portrays this vision that I want to yeah. pursue. So yeah, another half a million dollars. Wow. And then, you know, you, you Whitmix is in my backyard, so of course they're going to come and. I want to buy some of that equipment, and yep. there's another $50,000. Yeah. You know, like, it's just, sure. but having all of these things helps me give the products that I want to do. Like, I don't want to do the dentistry that just keeps the light on. Yeah. You know, I, I want to offer an experience for patients that's totally different. That's important. And it's products like what Bart does that allows that experience Absolutely. to continue outside of your office. Yep. And patients like what we show today, like, all of them, even the difficult ones, are happy yeah. at the end. You know, they, they they understand why my product is different and why Bart's product is different and why it's important for me to work with people like Bart to deliver that. Do you let Bart do the bite block and the setup and the finish, or do you do um, the bite block setup and so the So it depends on or? kind of my workload and how quick we need to get moving. I can do the bite block to save some time. Yeah, sure. It saves a whole trip out to yep. Nevada and back. His bite blocks are nicer than the ones that I make, so I like his bite blocks yeah. a lot better. Sure. Bart, would you finish someone else's setup? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we do that sometimes. Okay. There was another prosthodontist here today who's a good friend of mine, and I won't say his name, but he was <laughs> drilling me because I was not setting my anterior teeth and selecting my own teeth. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Bart's kind of handicapped me a little bit in that regard, but I trust him. He does a really fantastic job selecting tooth molds Mm -hmm. that i could never i not that i could never but i mean i feel like i trust him with his tooth selections because i give him enough information to make those decisions and he has uh multiple different lines that he pulls from yeah 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 so um he's got his favorites and I have never been unhappy with a setup. That what do you send? Sent. What is what do you send to him to get this thing started? Photos, video. Do you go that far? So he gets the photos and videos before he gets the case, because it immediately gets uploaded to an online yep. cloud service. Um, do you ever reject any? Be like, I don't want to fix that now. <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> well, I, I, I probably sometimes, should. <laughs> sometimes I do. I'll send him something just like seeing kind of his feedback before I'll send it. And see, like, is Bart going to let me send this, or do I have to get Patty to help me do it? <laughs> um, but he'll get all of the photos and everything before he gets the rest of the case. So we start out with, you know, facial photos, photos of their existing prosthesis if they have one, or if it's an immediate or an interim, mm-hmm. kind of photos of their teeth and, and what they have and what they used to have and where they want to be. And then he gets all the, you know, the bite blocks the with the marks and High smile and the, all of the nose. You send the uh, 40-year-old school picture that's blurry from a distance and the patient wants I mean, their teeth to look like this. It's, sometimes that's all they have. <laughs> uh, so sometimes he does get that. Um, you can't always clearly see yeah, the, yeah. The, the teeth the way you would like to, but you got to get a, a feel of their personality oh, sure. and like just kind of how they used to be. Their expectation. So. It's huge. What do they we want miss it to that be? sometimes. Well, think how easy the technicians are going to have it in, in 20, 30, 40 years because they're going to be bringing in digital f- images of themselves. This is what I look like, oh, you know, 40 sure. years ago. Yeah, <laughs> I have 500 of them. <laughs> yeah. Selfies that Here's I did my all old, within a week period. Here's my old <laughs> iPhone 5 from, you yeah. know. 2010. There's plenty of pictures of people now. You know. That's oh, hilarious. wow, that's an antique. <laughs> 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 so... What's the hardest thing for you working with someone from a distance? What are you missing usually? Not just with Dr. Stapleton, but I'm just saying in general when you're working with doctors, not next door or whatever, what's the information you're usually missing? Uh, nothing. 
Really? Really, literally nothing. It's no different than working for a doctor that's two blocks away, other than maybe I can't walk in their office by appointment and actually talk to the patient yeah. or see or give them some hands-on service or help or what have you. But really, we don't need that. We use FaceTime to our advantage when it comes to stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, prosthodontists like Brandon, they have the skill set to do anything a technician could do chair side. So it's, uh, you know, they don't really need me, just maybe some of my input. Or they yeah. need me to hear something, or they need to talk to me, or they need the patient to talk to me, or what, whatever the case is. But, yeah, literally nothing... As far as communication goes, it's it's the same whether you're a block away or or sure. across the country. So I think a lot of people might not realize that. Well, it's removable work for labs is always very local. They always want you to be close, right? And I mean, you don't always need to be. I no. mean, for a same day service, yeah. sure. sure. I mean, just logistics, but everything else. I mean, ninety percent of our removable work is you know within a fifty right. mile radius because right. they just think they you need it. to be close. Yeah. We're not very often in there dealing with it. Right, right. Yeah. But I'm always amazed with removable technicians because you can get an an, an edentulous model and then A2. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. You have no idea where this model. Where do these teeth need to go inside this space? And what size of head is this going (laughs) in? Right. Where does this lip go? And I'm always amazed by it. Yeah. That's the fun of it. (laughs) And then... (laughs) Luckily for Bart, he get he gets all that information, so he's kind of set it up to where he's not getting that A two denture yeah. slip. He's he's already got all the information, and um, so I, I I can sympathize with the technicians are sitting at the bench and they got this case, and they're like, "What the? F- am I supposed yeah. to do with this?" Yeah, because you you get you got to give to get. Yeah, that's I information have a, needed. Um, a local doc who wants she is adamant about scanning with her trios and doing a digital denture and i am so happy and excited for her but she'll call me when the patient is sitting in the chair and ask well what do i need to do no you need to plan ahead (laughs) (laughs) you need to know what data you need to collect so that way you're not in that predicament you know yeah yeah just looking and reaching for any answer and then getting mad at me when you're not giving me the information i need to give you what you're asking for that's that's reactive problem solving. A, yeah, it, it is, and it's frustrating for everyone involved. Have yeah. you scanned for a denture? Um, I hear it's hard. It's very difficult to scan yeah. an edentulous arch. So the protocol that I would utilize and recommend right now would be a wash impression of a yeah. denture, an existing prosthesis, scan that 360 degrees, have it the bite taken yep. in the mouth. And then scan everything extra orally. Sure. And you yeah. can do that with the trios. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's the most predictable way because, you know, the the movable tissue for the vestibule, it's it's difficult. It's it's really difficult to capture it with the trios. Yeah. You'd be amazed at how many calls I get asking, you know, can we do this with the, the trios? And, it's and the unfortunate thing is, is the sales reps are saying, well, you can scan for a denture. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you can if you know the work. Is that why they're calling and asking me that? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> give me they a list of their names. <laughs> you know, yeah. forty thousand dollars scanner because some dingbat told them that they could it, scan for it a digital. Okay, and I it had, can be done. I had an office. You just say, have to know the protocol. I got an all on four. Can I scan it? No. Uh, I said, "This is why I said you can. You'd be the first. Do you want to be the one to try this?" <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> there are workflows out there for all of these things, but you have to be into it. And want to invest your time into learning how to do it. Because yeah. I can guarantee you there will be hiccups along the way. Especially oh, yeah. if it's the first 15 that you've done. Well, the person who, who's calling and asking that question, <coughs> you have to think, do they even know how to, any of this stuff happens um, non-digitally? non-digitally. Yeah, absolutely. Because if they did, they probably wouldn't be calling and asking you that <coughs> in the first place. Right. Good point. So. Yeah, because if you can scan an edentulous arch, great. Now how do you get the interocclusal record? Yeah. How do you orient those jaws in space without having some kind of analog? Something to be there. Hold, yeah, yeah. Hold the space so you can capture over here and then capture over here. Yeah. So it's very difficult. It can be done. Have you done any immediate load hybrids? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you made them? Um, I use a digital workflow through Co-Diagnostics with Strawman. Okay, yeah. The smile in a box. Yep. So, and then I'll, 
I'll Which utilize I have to their um, system. It's the dumbest and name ever. It's a, <laughs> it's a stupid name. Um, <laughs> and then I print them in-house. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you print them on? Yes, you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Big props to Whitmix there. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, like that I, printer? I love that printer. Yeah? It's nice. Do you have a printer? I have a cheap printer. I, I often utilize Brandon uh, to I'll print s- I'll stuff send for him me. Some yeah. prints and he's like, man, this looks so much nicer than the one I printed. Yeah. It's, it's just the, the resolution, the, the oh, precision, sure. the action. Yeah, yeah. It's just fantastic. Yeah, I bought that. like an entry level frozen shuffle. Yeah. It's a, it's a nice little printer, but it's not an Asiga. Yeah. Uh, it's slow and um, it can be problematic. At least I've had, maybe it's. Me, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you have to manually program the whole dang thing. Yeah, like you can't there, just it doesn't have the the, the uh, ini files. Yep, you can't just load a file into it no. and then, and then it print a resin. No, the oh, the Sega wow. you can. You just load well, the yeah. file. Yeah, yeah. You just load There's the, the online file. resources for that, but yeah. Um, yeah. you have to manually program each setting. So when are you getting the when are you stepping up? When are you getting the next printer? Me? Yeah. I don't know. I'm hoping next year. Yeah, yeah. We're we're Chicago starting to, or something. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Surgical guides are kind of the big thing that we're wanting to get into. Yeah, I work closely with Strawman and Smile in a Box, but uh, to get <laughs> That's these <a> stupid name. <laughs> <It's dumb. laughs> <It's dumb. laughs> to get these cases um, in the door, I think it helps to offer a surgical uh, guide solution, um, and and those are the cases that I like to do now. I like to think of myself as like a, a fully edentulous lab, yeah, rather than a denture lab because I think yep. it's um, it's transitioned it's a little a bit transitioned with a little bit with implants sure. and um, and so uh, I've I feel like I'm more of specialized in just treating edentulous people and not so much uh, branching out into zirconia. So you you don't just materials. make a hunk of plastic for a mouth? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I offer a lot of different options so that. Uh, and it's been fun, like, growing sure. into some of this stuff. It's really uh, been fun for me. Do you plan the surgical <laughs> guides? No, not right now. Because that's where I hear the scary FDA part comes in, right. too. Like, labs should, we're allowed to print them if someone else designs them, like the doctor. But if we design or plan them, mm-hmm. that's when the FDA So typically, gets scary. the way it works, the workflow in my office would be if I'm working with a surgeon and I'm helping them do a smile in a box. I would do an initial, myself or my technician would do an initial plan, Mm -hmm. and I would kind of look at it, make sure everything was good if she did it, and then we'll send that to the doctor for approval. And then the doctor physically signs off an approval, and the doctor locks locks it so it can't be modified. And then from there, I actually outsource the designing. Of the the actual guide, yeah. Of the guide, because they're a little more intricate than a single tooth guide yeah because you've got the bone reduction the stabilizing oh the, guide. All that, yeah. yeah you've got sure. like three it's, or four yeah. stackable guides yeah. so it's, system. it's not a really straightforward design and i think the next version <laughs> of co-diagnostics will release all of that design yeah abilities but it would take hours hmm. to design all of those yeah it's a big it's deal. not like a single tooth guide yeah and we i use implant studio for single tooth okay guides. yeah and it's really straightforward and it also has an area for the doctor to approve so you design it, send it to the oral surgeon. Oral yep. surgeon says okay. Do you do a lot of them? Uh, we do a fair number. Really? Yeah. I don't find oral surgeons wanting single unit. Uh, periodontist. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Periodontist. The stackable guide system is what's kind of nice, but it's uh, there's a lot of patents out there on mm-hmm. that. Mm. Navigating. On how it goes together. Yeah, navigating Pass. that is kind of just yeah. It's. It's tough, so I'd rather leave it to to somebody who's already got the patent and then sure. let them deal with all the the legalities of it. Yeah, the V two R is who does the designing, and they have a nice little. It's through Strawman's. They have a nice uh, package, all inclusive mm-hmm. with the prosthesis design, the, all of the stack guides, with a flat fee. Nice. Yeah. So it, it's. Nice. I mean, it's a no brainer for me to let them design it, and I'll print it. Interesting. And it still saves a ton of money. That's cool. It is a lot cheaper, um, and it's a la carte. Mm-hmm. That's what I liked about it. It's you don't have to get the prosthesis. Yeah, you, you can do you know, it. You can pick denture. and choose which elements of the guide process you want. You can print it yourself, like Brandon said. If you have a printer in office mm-hmm. or in house, you know your typical stackable guide is like three thousand, thirty five hundred. Mm. This one, I think, you can get into for 
you can get into a nice stackable guide guided surgery for you know half that yeah um if you have the producer license with co-diagnostics uh the fee from v2r for all the design work is 800 bucks 60 bucks to export it your sleeves your resin and your printer Mm -hmm. so i mean less yeah 1500 bucks yeah would be a lot if you're if you're keeping it in-house yourself it just makes everything totally predictable though i mean there's no surprises or screw access holes or or blown out anatomy or (laughs) or anything (laughs) like that it's nice (coughs) nice well awesome i appreciate it guys thanks for sitting down it's nice to meet you and yeah uh, likewise sorry it took a little bit to gather us both it's all good (laughs) it's all good it's a long (laughs) weekend running around here yeah appreciate it all right thanks guys thanks Thanks. a lot Today's episode is brought to you by Kettenbach. Let's talk about impressions and impression materials. Can we agree that not all incoming records your lab receives are equal in quality or have captured the details you feel necessary to move forward confidently with a fixed removable or implant case? NADL studies show that small, medium, and large labs all face the same awful situation of producing remakes at no charge over and over again when it might not be the lab's fault. Kettenbach and their team of manufacturer reps are here to help your lab by offering support and solutions, not chairside milling units, that will improve the incoming clinical results and consistency you and your clients are looking to achieve. Their materials are manufactured in Germany using patented technology, and in America they only sell direct for less cost. Visit www.kettenbach-dental.us to learn more about Panacell, Identium, and Selgenet impression materials, Futar bite registration, Thistilis temp material and core buildup, Mucopin soft reline, and airway metrics. Kettenbach also offers materials used every day in the dental lab, in particular the Panacell Lab Putty Hard and Lab Putty Soft. These materials can be cleanly and easily dispensed in a one-to-one putty matrix. There are no messy accelerator gels with this system. The Panacell Lab Putty is sold in two 5kg buckets of base and catalyst and is definitely the dimensional, stable lab putty material you have been looking for. Try any of the materials risk-free today by calling Kettenbach Direct at 877-532-2123. Mention the code DENTALLABPODCAST25 and you will receive an additional 25% off your order. Once again, call Kettenbach Direct at 877-532-2123 to make the connection with a partner who can help your lab and your clients save money and increase quality coming in and going out. Thanks for your support, Kettenbach. So we'd like to say thank you to Bart Hyde and Dr. Brandon Stapleton for sitting down with my partner Elvis at the Digital Forum. And again, a big thanks to Whitmix for having Voices from the Bench record at the event. We'll probably be there next year, God willing. I'll be along with Elvis. Join us next week for another set of interviews that Elvis got at the Forum. When they do this event next year, put it on your radar because it's going to be amazing and worth going. Now, don't forget, you only have until November 6th to get the latest Voices from the Bench shirt. You can get a shirt, a long sleeve, or a hoodie. Head over to VoicesFromTheBench.com to order yours before they are no longer available. And then wear them everywhere you go and take pictures of them and send it to us so we can put them on Facebook. Also, be the one at Vision 21 or Lab Day to Chicago to let the world know that dental technicians have better technique. And I'm not even going to say... My comment about that, I'll let that up to the audience to think about what I think about that. But as always, a big thanks to this week's episode sponsors, Digital Dental and Kettenbach, both companies doing great things in our industry. Be sure to check out the links on this episode's show notes. By the way, we will see you next week in North Carolina at the Eastern Conference of Dental Laboratories. Big shout out to Martha Martin. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. All right, everybody. That's all we got. We appreciate it. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.
You ready? Yep. Am I? <laughs>